welcome back to my channel in case you are new here hi there i'm roslyn and as you all know by this title we are gonna see about 45 to create tips in under 20 minutes and i'm not assuring that 45 tips will be very new for you you might know a few of these and you might not so let's get started i'm just opening a screen size canvas and as you all know the two finger pinch is zoom in and zoom out it helps you to zoom in and zoom out the canvas in case you're wondering i know no one is wondering still i wanted to show you this cute little sleeve which i got from aliexpress i'll leave the link down below in case you want to check it out i'm just gonna choose the studio pen and a pink color and this slider here will help you to adjust the size and opacity of the brush i'm just gonna scribble on the screen and in case you want to undo this you can use two fingers tap and in case you want to redo this you can use three fingers and tap so then when you're drawing you are zoomed in or zoomed out if you want to see the full screen view you have to just pinch in and if you pinch out it will go back to the way it was before it also works for zoomed in canvas when you pinch in, it'll go to full screen and pinch out, it'll come back to the zoomed position. So that way it's easier for you to work on the drawings when you're doing artworks. And the toolbars which you see on the sides, in case you want to hide them, you can use four fingers and tap. It'll hide it and one more four finger tap will unhide the tools. And three fingers scrub on the screen will help you to clear the screen. Also, three fingers swipe down will help you to pop up the shortcut menu for copy and paste. It will have cut, copy, copy all, duplicate, etc. In case you want to pick a color from the artwork you're doing, all you have to do is use your one finger and hold on the screen, which will activate the color picker. You can use a finger or the pencil to use that. Click on the tiny little square in between the sliders to open the quick menu. This is the tiny little square in between the sliders. It will open the quick menu, which will have all these actions, which is purely customizable. You have to press and hold to customize the menu's action. There are various actions which will be listed inside. You can just choose whatever you like. You can also customize the other shortcuts using the wrench tool on top of the screen. And go inside and go to the preference and gesture controls. There you will find a lot of different gestures which will help you to set different shortcuts according to your own wish. The things which I am showing are the default ones and you can easily set them to different things. The other thing which you can use by long hold is you can draw any shape and hold to get the perfect shapes. And to add on you can use one finger touch. To make it even more perfect as you can see if I take the finger off it is not perfect and now when I keep the finger it becomes a perfect circle it works for all different shapes and size as well you can use it for lines and even triangles like this now it's not equilateral and when I touch it becomes equilateral so that's how you can get the perfect shapes while drawing And when filling color, you can use drag and drop. And without lifting the pencil, if you drag right and left, you can increase and decrease the press hold, which will help you to fill the shapes, even though they have incomplete uh, coverings. Now, when I lower the threshold, as you can see, it fills the color perfectly. If it's high, it'll fill all over. And if it's low, it might be able to fill the uneven closed shapes as well. And as I mentioned earlier, these sliders help you to change the opacity and brush size while moving the slider up and down. In case you couldn't stop where you wanted, you just hold and drag it outside the screen and you can now drag up and down so that you get a precise control over the brush size and you can set brush size to exactly where you want it to be. In this, you can also change the active brush which you are using into an eraser or a smudge brush. All you have to do is tap and hold the eraser and it will change the active brush into an eraser and you can use it as an eraser and this works for the smudge tool as well. 
you can change the any active brush into a smudge brush or an eraser so i'm just using the three finger scrub to clear the screen and now let's see the objects in different layers i'm just creating new layers using the plus there and i'm just drawing random shapes in all three different layers in case you want to merge them you have just have to pinch and make it into a single layer just in case you don't want to merge the layers but you want to select multiple layers and move them together or something you just have to swipe with one finger right and it will select the multiple layers you can group delete resize or move them all together swipe again to unselect the layers use two fingers and swipe right to enable alpha lock alpha lock will help you to draw only on the object present on the layer and it will avoid you to draw on the outside of the objects so it keeps the empty space empty throughout the drawing process use two finger tap on a layer to open the opacity of that layer you can slide left to decrease the opacity and slide right to increase the opacity and next when you use two finger tap and hold the layer it will select the layer using the s ribbon tool I'm not sure whether you are able to see this in the camera but if you try it for yourself you'll be able to see this clearly when you use the double finger tap and hold it will select the layer using the S ribbon tool in case if you have multiple objects in the layer and just drawing different shapes in the same layer and you want to move them all together you just tap on this arrow tool it will select the entire layer and this S ribbon tool will help you to select only the wanted thing you can just draw around the object like this and you can make your own selection and then tap on the arrow to move the particular selection on the layer you can drag the object anywhere on the layer and move it and keep it wherever you want you just have to tap outside of the box to move the object pixel by pixel it will be a very gentle and subtle move in case you want to move the object very little you just don't want to spoil it by dragging it you can just use this tap outside the selection method and when you use this arrow it will just select the entire layer you can use the uniform selection next to the freeform to resize the object on the layer uniformly There's also freeform and also distort. Both of it works similarly, where the one single point of the selection might stay fixed and the others will move, just like as you are seeing in the screen. And the wrap option will help you to wrap the object on the screen. Obviously, as you can see, you can wrap it wherever you want. The object in the layer will work as you push them front or back however you like you can just play around with it when you tap on the corner you will find three different options to move it to front back or middle I just resetted it now there are different options to choose colors now in the new updated procreate we have various methods to create a color palette on our own when you tap on the plus on top of the palettes the first method is selecting colors from the color wheel. You can create your own palette which is a regular method of creating a color palette. And the new from camera will help you to take a picture directly and import the colors from the picture in case you're outside drawing something and you can create a color palette easily. And new from file will help you to import the downloaded color palettes in case you downloaded something online and you can use them and import them using this. And the last one is through the pictures in the gallery you can choose any picture on the gallery and import the colors of the picture into the palette so let's see what the camera does as you can see when I move the camera around different objects it just picks the color from the object and when you take a picture you will just get the final color palette which you can use on your own the next one I wanted to show is new from photos 
I just selected a random picture from my gallery and here we have the color palette from the picture. So it's that easy to create a color palette now and you can set them default which will be shown directly below the color wheel. So now I just wanted to clear them by merging. The next important update which you are going to see is that references while drawing. For example, if you're drawing something and you're zoomed into the canvas and you're making some slight adjustments to the art and you want to see how it looks in the full screen, the changes in the zoomed area can be seen without having to zoom out using the reference here. Since here I can't be able to see this on the full screen, obviously I need to zoom out again. You can obviously use the pinch in and pinch out still. You can go to the wrench tool and go to the canvas. There is a reference. If you turn it on, you will get this small menu inside the screen. There is a drawing in your face. This face option will help you to open the camera and it will help you to paint on your face. It will use your face as the canvas. That is also fun. You should try it. And you can zoom in and zoom out on the reference. You can also color pick from the reference. This is very much easy when you want to pick a color from the other side of the canvas where you are zoomed in on a different area. This can help it. You can easily move it around and keep it wherever you want. And you can also import an image from the gallery which you can use as a reference. Any different image. Also you will be able to pick a color from this image as well. You can easily shift from the canvas to the image like our image to the canvas just by tapping like this and the main use of this reference is that you don't have to zoom out the drawing when which you are working on to see how it affects the main picture so as you can see here I'm doing some random color changes over here which I can clearly see on the reference picture how it is showing on the main image so I didn't have to zoom out to find out how it affects the main picture. So we can copy the layer from one artwork to the other just by holding like that. I'm gonna just tap on the gallery and you can drop it in any of the work here or you can create a new one and then drop the layer there which will import that layer here. Just by dragging and bringing it here, you can copy the layers from there. Or you can simply click on the copy and just uh, paste it here and the layer will be available there as well. It will not be affected in the original file. You can also do this for multiple layers by using the one finger right swipe select option. And you can select the layers and bring them all together. Here I'm using a new layer and brushing it with some color. And I'm just going to the magic wand tool. Inside that, uh, there are a few adjustments available where you can change the adjustments for the layer or using the pencil. So you can use this uh, pencil setting and you can change the saturation or brightness or hue everything just by using the pencil alone. Like where you are using the pencil, the settings will be changed there alone. Or you can use the entire layer option as well. Like there are two options available. So you can just play around with each settings and find out what they do. It's so easy. You can just try it on your own. Just the color balance curves and gradient map. Everything works for the pencil or the layer. I'm just going to open a new empty canvas. And I'm going to double tap to select the color. And drag and drop to fill the color. Now I'm creating another layer. And I'm going to fill the half of it with white. And after filling it half white, I'm just going to merge the two layers. And I'm going to the magic wand tool and choosing the Gaussian blur where I'm going to choose the layer. You can adjust the intensity just by swiping right or left. So I just like it here and I'm going to leave it there. It's very much useful when you want a background to be gradient. And after that you can go to the gradient map. I'm going to choose the layer and you can use multiple colors in one single screen. So there we have different varieties. You can choose anything you like in the gradient library. You can change the colors as well, which I'll be showing now. So I'm just going to choose one and then if you can see there are different 
square is inside which has different colors and which represent the different colors of the gradient you can adjust the intensity of each of it just by moving them here and there you will find so many different gradient options given there by default and you can also customize them just by clicking on the tiny squares there just tap on it you will open the color wheel where you can change the color according to your wish so that's that easy just you can get the gradient background very easily so let me show if you are interested into lettering you can just you can fill the one layer with any color and then you can use a clipping mask and then mask that layer and after masking the layer if you use black it will open and if you use white it will hide so I'm just gonna use a black color and some any of the brush you can choose any brush of your choice and just write on the layer you'll be able to get that uh, gradient on the background on this layer which will look so cool while lettering something you can do this with different brushes as well it will work for all the brushes and you can use this background for other drawings as well like you can use them as a sky gradient you can use it for any other backgrounds and now let's see the S ribbon tool it's used for selection as we all know and there is one more feature now added which is color fill I'm just gonna use a freehand selection and I'm just gonna select the area in the picture so this is where I want to fill color and I'm just gonna choose a color and if you can see it fills the color directly there where I have selected you can do this the other way around as well you can just first select it so after selecting you just need to tap on the color fill which will use the present color to fill the selection you can do that anywhere you like and when you adjust the color wheel you'll be able to see the color change in the selection so if you choose automatic and the object in the layer will automatically get selected like if you tap on there the whole shape will be using taking up the color which you are choosing so this way you can use the selection yes ribbon tool to fill colors the tap on the color to open the color wheel and drag it down to make it float around the screen like you can keep it wherever you want and you can access all the color options through this as well it will act just like the reference tool which we saw before it will be similar to that and there are some more added features in the magic wand too there is noise, sharpen, bloom, glitch, halftone, chromatic operation, liquify and clone so let's check them out one by one let's check out the noise there are different values given down below which you can adjust and you can swipe left and right to adjust the intensity of the effect on the layer so this is how the noise works and the next one is sharpen sharpen as we all know it will just sharpen the image it will make it clear cut the next thing we are gonna see is bloom this one is very much helpful if you are gonna describe something little glowing or light which you want to glow or illuminate you can use this always just like this when you use the slider and change the intensity it will glow and then next one is a glitch as the name suggests it is gonna glitch the layer it has layer and pencil option as well it has four different types artifact wave signal and diverge so there is different uh, sliders as well which you can adjust the value so the artifact will give the glitch just like this and the wave will be like this swiping it right and left on the screen will help you to adjust the intensity and then there are a few other slider adjustments down below as well you can use them to get the desired effect this is how the signal will affect the picture and then the diverge so that's all about the glitch you can actually play around with each of the settings to get to know them better next the half tone for the half tone we have three options full color screen print and newspaper each of this will affect the image differently so full color will do this when you swipe and adjust the intensity so next the screen print 
it will give this effect when you use and the newspaper is going to make it like this if you tap outside the canvas you will get this shortcut pop up menu so this have five different options where you can preview cancel apply reset or undo the work which you did so i usually go to reset if you don't want to do the changes next is chromatic aberration so here we have two different things perspective and displays so the perspective will look like this the displays will edit the image like this so now you can do all these editings directly in the procreate instead of going to another photo app so next that is private insert you can add a private photo and hide from the screen replay which you can do finally after drawing something here we have insert a file photo or take a photo there each thing will have a private option as well if you just uh, swipe it left like this you will find the private option so you can use this to insert a private photo so here i have inserted a picture and you can use it as a reference or to trace or something even in the layers it will show that as private it won't be visible on the screen replay in the end i'm just going to show you a short version of how it will work so i'm just randomly drawing or tracing the image in a new layer and finally when you go to the wrench tool and go to the video and use the time lapse replay it will show the replay which didn't show the image which i inserted if you have observed so that's it the use of the inserted private image it won't be visible on the final time lapse replay video one last thing which i wanted to show you guys before i finish this video is that uh, you can import images in one more way where you can use the photos and go to the split screen mode and split the screen with the photos and now you have access to the photos directly from the procreate and you can just uh, drag and drop the image which you want into the procreate this will create a new layer and import the image into that layer so now you can use this image as you like so this importing image way can also be implemented using the reference image like where you we use the wrench tool and went to the canvas and activated the reference here we have the image option as you all know so there you can drag and drop the image like this and when you tap on the image side you will find the image which we dropped there so that's all the tips i have for you today please consider subscribing to my channel if you're new here and please like the video if you learn something new also share it with your friends and in case if i miss something out please feel free to mention it in the comments so our friends can learn and see you soon in my next video take care bye bye